In this video, we're going to introduce to you the Pythagorean Theorem. Little known fact about the Pythagorean Theorem was actually a very controversial uh, theorem at the time of Pythagoras. Um, in fact, there's a lot of rumors and, and history to suggest that Pythagoras didn't even invent the Pythagorean Theorem or discover it. Um, but a group of his followers did, and or there was some drama about who really did and then who took credit for it. So who knew math was so exciting? Right, guys? All right, on to Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem, that's like the one thing that we always all remember and we will for the rest of our lives. That's the one that says A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is great, but what are we talking about? What is A, B, and C? Well, it's talking about the sides of a right triangle. So a right triangle has three sides. Well, all triangles have three sides. Um, a right triangle has what are called the legs. There's two legs, and there's the hypotenuse. Uh, most of the time, you should have a it will be indicated that it's a right triangle because where that right angle is, we put what's called the table. It makes it look like there's a little square in the corner where that right angle is. Then this is a leg. This is the leg. The side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. But for Pythagoras, uh, we say that one of the legs is A, one of the legs is B, and the hypotenuse is C. So we change our variables ever so slightly. And then what it says is that uh, if we square A and add it to the square of B, the result is the square of C. So that's the Pythagorean theorem referring to the legs and hypotenuse of a right triangle. Now we can apply that mathematically to triangles. We want to find the missing side length. So here we're given, a, we want to be careful with the information we're given. 12 is opposite the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. We can label that one C. That means that these two are the legs. It doesn't matter which one you call A and which one you call B. Maybe I'll call this one A and this one B. So it looks like we're missing the length of one of the legs, which I called A. Plugging into the Pythagorean theorem, we would say A squared plus 4 squared is equal to 12 squared. We're going to simplify these squares that we can. 4 squared is 16. 12 squared is 144. Then to get A squared by itself, we'll subtract 16 from both sides. And we get a squared is equal to 128. To get a by itself, so how do we, uh, if a is being squared, how do we undo a square? That's when we take the square root of both sides. So we're going to take the square root over here. We're going to take the square root here. Now, if you're taking the square root of both sides, mathematically it is uh, correct to put a plus or minus in front of your number. But because we're talking about the length, uh, side lengths of a triangle, side lengths are only positive, we would disregard the negative case. So generally when we're looking at solving using Pythagorean theorem, we, we don't necessarily write the plus or minus because the minus will always get thrown out. Leaving us with A is the square root of 128. Now it doesn't specify here, but we're going to assume that we need to simplify the radical if it can be simplified. So the question is, does 128 have any perfect square factors? And in fact, it has a lot of perfect square factors, the largest of which is 64. We can rewrite 128 as 64 times 2. The square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 2 is stuck as the square root of 2. So completely simplified, the missing side had a length of 8 square root of 2. In our next example, let's see what we're given. We're given one leg is 2. We're going to call this leg A for fun. This is the hypotenuse, so we're going to call this C, and then this is the other leg. How did I know that this was the hypotenuse? Because it's opposite the right angle. So I changed the direction of my right angle here, or of the triangle. I rotated it a little bit. Um, it's opposite that right angle, so it is the hypotenuse. So again, when we plug in, we're going to say 2 squared plus B squared is equal to 8 squared. Now we want to isolate B. That would be 4 plus b squared is equal to 64. Take away 4 from both sides. b squared is equal to 60. To uh, undo the square of b squared, we'll take the square root. And again, normally we should put a plus or minus sign here. Because we're talking about side lengths, it's only positive, so we can just ignore that step. And then I'm going to bring this up over here. We get b is equal to the square root of 60. We should simplify our answer if we can. Does 60 have any perfect square factors? It's not itself a perfect square, but it does have a perfect square factor of 4. We can rewrite 60 as 4 times 15. 
Um, and then we can say the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 15 is stuck as the square root of 15. So the missing side length here, the missing leg, has a length of 2 times the square root of 15. In this video, we're going to do one more example of applying the Pythagorean theorem to a right triangle. In this right triangle, we are given one leg is a length of 3, one leg is a length of 7. We are missing the hypotenuse. So we're going to call this one A, although really it doesn't matter which one you call A or B. It does matter that you appropriately label the hypotenuse, which is opposite the right angle. Then from here, we have 3 squared plus 7 squared is equal to C squared. That's 9 plus 49 is equal to C squared. 9 plus 49 is 58. 58 equals C squared. To get C by itself, we will take the square root. As previously mentioned, generally when we take a square root, we should put a plus or minus here, but because we're talking about the side lengths of a triangle, we would never include a negative because side lengths have to be positive. Um, so we can just disregard that and just say it's the square root of 58. So I'm going to use the commutative property inequality to turn it around and say C is equal to the square root of 58. From here, we want to verify that that is completely simplified. 58 is 29 times 2. They're both primes, so the only perfect square factor that 58 has is 1. This would be the simplified hypotenuse length.